mostly based upon hormonal therapies, but today I want to present a more integrated approach that I've found is absolutely necessary to be successful in this kind of field. We currently face a paradigm shift in medicine. You can call it the anti-aging revolution, stopping the clock, getting rid of the secret killer, inflammation, the source of heart attack, colon cancer, and Alzheimer's. If we live to 60, we could have a martini and call it a day. But we will live longer than those before us. And the question is, how will we live better than those before us? So today, I'd like to present you a medical model to restore optimal function that works using hormones, nutrition, detoxification, mind balancing, and body balancing. The data that this model is based upon doesn't come from this kind of source, nor does it come from this Brazilian medicine woman who I once rotated with and observed in action. But it actually comes from our literature. It comes from the regular literature, which on average takes about 20 years to make it into clinical practice. So obviously we're trying to change that. It's a five-point model of restoration. The aim is to restore optimal function to the cell so that they can do what they do best, which is keep us healthy, happy, energetic, cancer-free, plaque-free. That's what the cells do when they have everything they need to function properly. The five areas in this model do include restoring hormones, which I did for many years before I realized that if you do not pay attention to the nutrients that are needed to activate each hormone, you will not succeed. Then I realized that the bowel and the liver could really mess up the chemical reactions above, and so could imbalances in the mind. If anything, this might be the most important one and imbalances in the body. So to restore optimal function, we really needed to pay attention to all five areas. The question of why we should restore hormones should be quite evident from this conference. With each passing year, our organs produce less hormones, all of the hormones on this page. Obviously, genetics and lifestyle play a role, but every single hormone changes after the age of 30. Progesterone is the first to go. Lighter sleep, anxiety attack, mood swings, and it is the number one reason for a Prozac prescription. Breast cysts, ovarian cysts, heavier bleeding, also the number one cause of a hysterectomy in this age range, late 30s, early 40s. And progesterone deficiency happens to be the number one cause of bone loss. Progesterone is a major bone builder. In case you're wondering, women do not acquire Xanax and Prozac deficiencies when they reach age 38. It turns out that progesterone binds to the GABA receptor in the brain, which is the same receptor which Xanax and Prozac bind to. The receptors for estrogen, progesterone, and testosterone are on every single organ in the body. So no wonder we have a host of symptoms, including vaginal atrophy, sexual dysfunction, depression, low energy, osteoporosis, cognitive decline, Alzheimer's. And for those wondering whether or not it's safe to restore hormones, ask yourself how safe it is to not restore hormones. Suzanne Summers paved the way for those doctors who may not have looked at bioidentical hormones, but we sure woke up when her book came out and patients started leaving the practice since we didn't know about these hormones. And the menopause maze, the medical standard is to restore what is missing with what is missing. So why are we so confused about sex hormone replacement? Obviously, I'm saying we shouldn't be without hormones, but the question is, why am I so comfortable prescribing hormones when we have the looming fears of cancer and heart attacks out there? And I'd like to just share with you what we learned from the WHI that's actually applicable and allows us to practice hormone restoration with uh, comfort. WHI studies 16,000 women, average age 63 and 71, using conjugated equine estrogen and Provera, which is medroxyprogesterone acetate. 10,000 women, seven more heart attacks, eight more strokes, eight more breast cancers, six fewer colon cancers, six fewer hip fractures. And interestingly, a few years later, reanalysis showed 
a 21% reduction in diabetes. Why is this? Pre-existing disease, the wrong hormone ratios, the oral route, and synthetic progestins. We know, to examine this a little bit more carefully, that late start increases heart risk, both seen in the WHI study and the HERS study. Late start also increased brain risk, increasing stroke by 40% and increasing dementia. But our early start is heart protective. Even the very same study, WHI, when reanalyzing the women in the 50 to 59 age group, found a 44% reduction in cardiac events. And when estrogen was started, hormone replacement started before age 56, it's also brain protective. There's a lot of data now coming out to support why it is that we found these kind of findings. And most of it in animal and human models is showing that early HRT prevents artery plaque. And late HRT in patients who have never had HRT will cause rupture of existing artery and plaque. Second, the normal ratios of estrogen are protective. If you look at estrone, which is E1 on this page, it's the clot and breast stimulating one. It's only at 10% when we're premenopausal, but it goes up to a whopping 80% in menopause because it's produced in the adrenal glands and fat tissues. Obviously, we want to stay away from that, but when you look at what the WHI study used, they used Premarin, 50% E1, especially through the oral route. Obviously, they were going to get more clots and more heart attacks. The oral route, and there's two three dozen cardiac studies now showing some of this literature, the oral route goes through the liver, produce, produces estrone, and is just more clot promoting. Oral estrogen increases triglycerides 27%. We know that triglycerides are the only independent risk factor for cardiac disease out of the cholesterol profile. Oral estrogen doubles C-reactive protein, raises the clot risk by raising clotting factors, whereas transdermal estrogen lowers our clot risk three times. It also reduces sympathetic tone and blood pressure. For anybody wondering whether or not we should take our women who have high blood pressure off of estrogen, if you're using it transdermally, you're protecting them. Transdermal estrogen doesn't have any effect on clotting factors. Progestin, which was used in the WHI study, is very different from natural progesterone by that molecule that you see. There are several studies showing anywhere from a 26% increase in breast cancer to an eight-fold increase in breast cancer from using progestin. Progestin increases cancer risk by stimulating breast cells and suppressing metallo and does not suppressing metalloproteinase enzymes. If you look at progestins, they also increase the clot risk five-fold. So in the WHI study, they used an oral route increasing clot risk threefold, and then you've got the progestin fivefold. Obviously, you were going to get more clots and breast um, strokes and so on. Uh, progestin opposes vasodilation, and it also stimulates vascular smooth muscle cell in the coronary arteries. Progestin also has terrible effects on sleep and mood, so I don't know why anybody would want to be using it. What we learned from this study is start early. Mimic the normal ratios using transdermals. And starting early doesn't mean that when you get the woman in her 60s and 70s that you can't start her on estrogen. It just means that you can't start her on oral estrogen. Use a bioidentical progesterone. Bioidenticals, of course, are identical to uh, the human body. And even the soy products that are available over the counter are not molecularly identical. There are plenty of FDA-approved bioidenticals. As you can see, they're listed here. And the advantage of these is that they're covered by insurance, but the advantage of compounded products is that you can actually add the estradiol, estriol, testosterone, all in one cream, and it makes the do dosage adjustments a lot easier.